So this is an old F-350 with a 7.3 power stroke. This one happens to be a early 99. But the problem we're experiencing is a power steering pump failure or it's about to go out. So, I mean, very apparent. It's actually somewhat working, but that takes a considerable amount of effort to move. Additionally, the brake pedal is well, kind of non-existent. The way I narrow down that's not the hydro boost and the power steering pump is because if you rev it up a tad, power steering pump works just fine. Before you install the new pump, make sure to flush your power steering fluid. Here's old stuff that came out of mine. How you'd go about that is disconnect this line off the hydro boost just leave it in the upright position connect a clear hose to the fitting and run it down into the jug so the stuff collects in there and remove the reservoir cap and just top it off basically what you do is take the steering wheel left right pump the brakes a couple times top it off the old stuff comes out do it again Top it off again. Make sure you use ATF. Don't use power steering fluid. Get yourself a breaker bar. Slide it in there. Push and the belt will slide off. Now with the belt removed, just drop it down there. You have a nice diagram in case you're not sure how to put it back together. But our next step would be cut these zip ties off if you have them. Um, you have three 13 millimeter bolts off the alternator. You don't need to disconnect the connectors here. Just take off the three bolts and flip it up out of the way. With the alternator removed, I took this hose and flipped it out of its channel right here so I have a little more room down there. You have this hose on top right there with that clip. Just take it off and that's the first one up. There's three in total. Then you have that one right below it, right there, which you might get some clearance after we remove this. After you pull the top hose off, you can just drop it somewhere out of the way. Now, this fitting is uh, needs an 18 mil wrench. Um, it's a confined space, right? You could also remove the battery tray, the air box but I like making myself work harder, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna slip in the wrench, take off the fitting. There's an additional hose somewhere on the bottom, but we'll have to reach it after you take off the bracket. All right, now that fitting is off. You have one more. You can just see the edge of the hose clamp on top of that. But what I'm gonna do is remove this whole bracket you have one, two, three, 13 millimeter bolts. And once you take that off, this whole assembly will be able to slide out this way. So I'll have more room to fetch my hand down there and take off the last bottom hose. Small correction, I was wrong. There is those three, but there's an additional one right under here. Once you undo the last bolt, the whole bracket basically, just, falls off this way that is the last hose I was talking about right there so once you undo that the whole thing just comes out I threw a pan down there to collect some of the fluid that's gonna fly out of there now that you have the whole bracket assembly out you need to separate the pump from the bracket itself uh, those three bolts are blocked by the pulley and I noticed that this third bolt is backed out for some reason so when I assemble the new pump together I'm most likely going to use some medium strength thread locker just in case so that doesn't happen to get this pulley off you're going to need a pulley puller kit you can either buy one from Harbor Freight rent one from AutoZone or O'Reilly's they're like 30 40 bucks to rent and then you get your money back if you've never used a power steering pump pulley before 
and it's relatively simple. You're using this part of the big bolt to push the shaft down while using these clamps under here to pull it out while pushing that in. So when this just sits like that, these clamp under, it's a bit hard to do one-handed. Basically it looks like that. And you take this, slide it on top, just to hold it on place. Now, get a ratchet up here and a wrench down here and crank opposite ways. Now that the pulley is off the pump, time to separate the pump from the bracket with these three 17 millimeter bolts. Here's the new pump. This one is a Motorcraft unit. It is remanufactured because they don't make new ones anymore but I would advise not getting an AutoZone or some cheap replacement this isn't even that good it's still a reman but this is as good as you can get if you're gonna buy one the AutoZone ones are really hit or miss you can do like three or four and finally end up with a good one if you want to put in the work go ahead I just kind of want to do one and done. This is about a hundred bucks after you return the core. Now this part is pretty self-explanatory, but we're going to put this end into the power steering pump and crank this down and have this surface press the pulley back on. Before I put this assembly back in the truck, this kit comes with two O-rings. I know what this one is for, I'm not sure what this one is. Um, it might be to the Hydro Boost, but I'm not sure. As far as this one goes, you do need to replace this one. This um, is a special Teflon O-ring. Uh, this is old one right here. It's all brittle and it broke off. Ironically, this ended up being probably the hardest part of the job. But as you see, the O-ring is on now. Um, the best way to do it is to stretch it a tiny bit, put some ATF on the threads, and just slowly using your nail, start peeling it back past the threads and eventually it will go on. But make sure you do replace this, because this is a high leaking point. Putting everything back together is just the reverse of taking it off. So once you get the bracket in this position, it's a good opportunity to hook up the back hose. And once that's on, you know, twist it, get the side fitting on, bolt it up, top hose. Pretty self-explanatory. Got everything bolted back up. This is the fluid I'll be using today. If you can get your hands on any synthetic stuff, that would be even better. But fill it up as much as it'll take. Then go start the truck and you're going to have to bleed the system. So the way you bleed it is full lock. It's similar to flushing it. Tilt the wheel, uh, turn the wheel all the way to full lock. And then put some more in there. Other way, pump the brakes. Um, basically, once it stops taking fluid and 
you're going to be able to see uh, air bubbles coming up. You're also going to be able to feel and hear some of that happening as well. So I went on a little bit of a test drive and it's a lot better. But unfortunately, um, it's either a weak pump or maybe this one won't last that long. But when I um, use the brake, it definitely stiffens up. So there's a big chance uh, my Hydro Boost also needs to be replaced. Because um, I, I can hear the pump in the Hydro Boost squealing. Um, but that is the reality of these pumps. Even the Motorcraft ones. I mean, they are better than the AutoZone ones from what I looked into and people's experiences. That seems to be the case. But you still get these duds. You get the weak pump. Sometimes it's trash. You have to, you know, send it back and get another one. So, yeah. Unfortunately, that's the case. Um, I know there are some performance pumps for trucks with, like, lifts and big tires, you know. But they're... 400 500 dollars and that's just not you know what i want to spend on one of these so unfortunately i guess sometimes it just is like that especially for these trucks parts are not that great even the motocraft ones um i will update in the comment section or in the description like maybe if this one completely dies if it gets better we'll see but thank you for watching. I hope your experience is better than mine. And have a good one.